Hi everybody, my name is Melanie Murray and I'm a family nurse practitioner student. This is my patient for today. His name is Julian. Um, upon arrival, Julian has already emptied his bladder. He's currently in a hospital gown. We've already taken his vitals and we've already done the smell and eye chart assessment. Julian was able to see 2020. He was able to read this last line here. So his vision was 2020 according to the smell and eye chart. His vitals upon arrival was Blood pressure with a manual cuff of 126 over 82. His pulse was 64. His respirations were 12. And his temperature was 98.2. And his weight that we got was 210 pounds. And then his height is 6 foot 1. Okay, so starting with the physical examination, we're just going to take a look at his head and face, facial features and see that his eyes are symmetrical, his mouth looks normal. There's no facial drooping or anything going on there. I don't see any masses or anything like that. But then we're going to move into palpating his head and the facial bones. So I'm going to palpate the skull here. Any pain or tenderness? No masses or swelling or anything that I can feel. I'm going to feel the facial bones here. No pain or tenderness with that. I'm going to feel the temporal mandibular joint here. Go ahead and open up and close. And no clicking or popping or anything. Um, no pain or tenderness with that as well. Okay, great. Now I'm just going to move into palpating the sinuses. So I'm going to palpate the frontal sinus. No pain or discomfort there. And no swelling. The ethmoid sinus. And the maxillary. And then I'm just going to feel the lacrimal apparatus here. Go ahead and close. Okay, and everything feels normal. And then what I'm gonna have him do is I'm just gonna have you, Julian, raise your eyebrows for high. Go ahead, clench your teeth tight. Okay, and then close your eyes really tight for me. Okay, great, go ahead and smile. Okay, stick your tongue out. Go up towards your nose, down towards your chin, out side to side. Okay, great, everything looks good there. And then I'm also gonna perform a light touch um, sensation happening here. Yeah, close your eyes and then let me know wherever I am, okay? Touch. Right cheek. Chin. Okay. Okay, great. That all looks good. And now we're going to go ahead and move into the eyes. So I'm just going to look at his eyes first. So I'm going to just have you close your eyes. Um, the eyebrows are nice, nice and thick, shiny, along with the rest of his hair. Um, they extend past the outer canthus. There's no crusting, no drainage happening with the eyes. Go ahead and open for me. There's no redness or yellowish tint indicating any type of jaundice or anything. Um, they're nice and white there. I'm going to pull down here. The conjunctiva is nice and pink and moist. So after that, I'm just going to grab a pen light. And I'm going to check out your pupillary response here. And his pupils are round, reactive to light, and accommodate well. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is the um, six cardinal fields for the extraocular eye movements here. So what I'm going to have you do is follow my finger. We're going to go up towards the ceiling, down towards the ground, and then up and down. Okay. And everything looks good there as well. Then we're going to do the Rosenbaum test here. So I'm from 14 inches away, I'm going to have you read that line there. 87453MWOXO107. Okay, great. And from the Rosenbaum test, we're able to say that Julian has 20-20 vision once again. Okay, and then I'm also going to grab the otoscope here. And I'm going to test the red reflex. So I'm going to use my left eye and look in Julian's left eye. Okay. And then my right eye to his right eye. Okay, great. And there is a red reflex. So that is all normal. Okay, so now that we're... Actually, there's one more test with the eye. So what I'm going to have you do is cover one eye. Great. Now the other one. And the eye remains fixed. There's not a sadness happening there. 
so everything is within normal limits with the eyes. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and move on to the ears. So Julian's ears look symmetrical. They're not low set or anything like that. I don't see any um, erythema, any masses on the ears, on the auricles, um, and there's no drainage happening the way that I can see right now. Then I'm going to go ahead and palpate them. So upon palpating the ears, no masses, no pain, no tenderness. Okay, great. Then I'm going to take the otoscope. Take this on here. I'm going to pull the oracle up and back and look at the tampenic membrane. Okay, great. And the tympanic membrane looks nice and curly gray here. I'm going to go up and back here. Okay, and the tympanic membrane is not bulging. There's no redness. There's no swelling. There's no foreign bodies happening there. Okay, and now what we're going to do is you're not hard of hearing or anything. You're not having issues with hearing. Okay, great. So what I'm going to perform now is the whisper test. So I'm going to say three things, and then um, you tell me what I'm saying. Go ahead and if lose one of your ears. Okay. One, two, three. Great. Four, five, six. Okay, great. And all of that looks good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the tuning fork. So with the tuning fork, I'm going to do the Weber test first. I'm going to strike this, place it on the top of his head just to make sure that he's hearing um, equal vibrations and equally in both ears. So I'm going to strike this, place it on top of the head. Are you hearing equally bilaterally in both ears? Yes. Okay, great. And now we're going to move on to the Rini test. I'm going to strike this, place it on the mastoid bone, and then I'm going to place it in front of your ear after you stop hearing vibrations on that bone, okay? Strike here. Tell me when you stop hearing, stop hearing the vibrations. No. Okay. Five. Okay, great. So air conduction was twice as long as bone conduction, which is the normal finding there as well. Okay, so um, that is about it for the ears. So now moving on to nose, I'm going to go ahead and just inspect first. I'm just looking. There's no masses. There's no drainage. Um, I don't see any deviation right now. Um, the bridge of the nose looks all fine. So then um, I'm just going to feel here. So I'm going to palpate the nose. So it doesn't feel deviated. The nerves are nice and patent. Um, then I'm going to look inside of your nose. And I'm not noticing any polyps or anything. It's nice and pink and moist in there. There's not too much nasal drainage happening, so everything is normal with that. Um, we're going to move on to smell tests, just to test cranial nerve one here. So what I'm going to have you do, Julian, is shut your eyes, and then I'm going to place an object on your nose, and then just go ahead and tell me if you can pick out whatever scent that I'm putting underneath of there. Okay. Okay, yes. All right. Um, keep them closed. Brown sugar. Yes. Okay, perfect. So everything looks good with the nose. We're going to move on to the mouth. So I'm just inspecting his mouth first. So I'm noticing that there's no ulcerations on the lips or anything. The lips are nice and pink and moist. Um, there's no like asymmetry happening with the mouth. Everything is symmetrical. Smile for me. Great. Everything looks good. Okay, go ahead and open your mouth. I'm just going to take a look inside. Let me get my pen light back out. Okay. And I'm not noticing any ulcerations on the inside of his mouth. There's no redness or swelling. Go ahead and stick your tongue out. No tremors happening. Um, the tongue, go ahead, stick your tongue out. The tongue is nice, nice and smooth, normal for ethnicity, the color, um, no ulcerations on the tongue as well. Okay, you can put your tongue back in. Okay, and then I'm just going to um, palpate inside of the mouth. I'm just going to place a glove on. Go ahead and open for me. I'm just going to palpate inside the mouth. The teeth are, teeth are a nice um, ivory color. No cavities, no chipped or loose teeth happening inside here. No tenderness when I'm doing any of this. Okay, great. 
And then what I'm going to do is tuck some more printing layers. I'm going to have you open. Say ah. Ah. Great. And the soft palette rises, and the uvula also rises when he says ah. And then I'm going to perform a um, gag reflex. So I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. And also, when he, when I was looking in here with the pen light, go ahead, open one more. The tonsils are a plus two out of four. Um, so that is normal. Go ahead and open. And this is the gag reflex. Okay, and he does have a gag, gag reflex. So that is good there. Okay, so now that we're done with the um, mouth, we're going to move on to the neck. So I'm once again just looking at the neck first and inspecting it. I don't notice any pulsations. I don't notice any um, JVD distension, nothing like that, no masses. And then I'm going to look at the trachea here. So there's no uh, tracheal deviation that I can notice right now. I'm just going to go ahead and palpate here. And the trachea looks nice and midlined. Um, no issues there. And then I'm going to go ahead and feel the thyroid. So I'm kind of going to get behind him here. Um, I'm going to feel, I'm going to say go ahead and swallow. And I feel that ripcord cartilage there. So I'm feeling the left side of the thyroid. And on the fifth side, I'm going to feel the right side. No tenderness. No. And I'm not feeling any nodules or anything abnormal happening there. Okay, great. So now we're going to um, take a look at the lymph nodes. So I'm going to start with the preauricular, postauricular, and then we're going to move into the occipital. Then we're going to go to the tonsillar, submandibular, the submental, superficial cervical chain, posterior cervical. Deep cervical, which it's normal to not feel, and I'm not feeling. Go ahead and put your arms like this. Oh, there you go. Superclavicular is also normal not to feel, which I'm not feeling. And then I'm going to hold your arm here. Infraclavicular axillary, and that is also normal not to feel, and I'm not feeling any um, worrying lymph nodes or anything. The ones that I do feel are movable, they're not firm or fixed or anything. Okay, so then after um, palpating there, what I'm going to, I palpated the thyroid and the um, lymph nodes. We're going to move on to auscultating. So I'm also going to feel for a carotid pulse here, not at the same time, just one at a time. His pulse is plus two, which is normal. So after palpating, I'm going to go ahead and auscultate. So I'm going to um, auscultate the carotids first with the Belmic stethoscope. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and hold it. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and just hold it for me. Great. And breathe. Deep breath in and hold it. Good. And breathe. Breathe normally. I'm just going to also take the thyroid now. Great. And I'm not hearing any bruise or any abnormalities with that. Um, before we move on, I'm also going to have you provide some range of motion things for me. Go ahead and look up towards the ceiling, down towards the ground, back at me, side to side. Great. Okay. I'm going to have you shrug your shoulders. Okay. Now relax. Now shrug them against mine. Okay, great. Strong. Go ahead and press against my hand. Okay, and we'll get one here. Okay, great. Okay, now that we are done with the head and the neck, we're going to go ahead and just move on down. I'm actually going to have you sit over here for me so everybody can see your back. Okay. So we're just first inspecting his back here. I'm going to tilt this down a bit. Okay, great. So we're just inspecting his back. Everything looks completely normal. There's no masses. There's no asymmetry happening here at all. Um, I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to kind of palpate everything. No masses, no pain, no tenderness. Okay. I'm going to check the thoracic expansion here. So I'm going to 
grab you here at the, around the 10th rib. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and out. Great. And my hands are expanding equally bilaterally, so that is great. Okay. And then I'm also going to have you say 99. We're going to do tactile firmatus again. 99. Okay. 99. Great. 99. Okay. And it is normal to hear those vibrations, which we just did. Okay. And then we're going to move on to testing um, diaphragmatic excursion here. So... What I'm going to ask you to do, I just have to grab a pen. Okay, I'm actually going to start with um, percussing the area. So I should hear dullness over bone, which I'm hearing the dullness over the scapula. And then moving down, I'm hearing resonance over the lung fields. Okay, great. Same thing over here, dullness over the scapula. And resonance over the lung fields. Great. Okay, now what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you take a deep breath in and hold it. Okay, and where that, dullness, or where that resonance stops, I'm marking. Now you can just breathe normally. Deep breath in and hold it. Okay, great. And now you can just breathe. And now what I want you to do is take a deep breath in and on exhale, try to hold your exhale for me, okay? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, same thing on this side. Deep breath in and exhale. Hold your exhale. Okay, great. And I'm just going to measure here. Looks like three and a half centimeters on this side and almost four on the other side, which anywhere from three to five is normal. So these are both normal findings. Okay, I'll just grab that here. And now what I'm going to do is just auscultate all the areas, all the lung fields, I'm sorry. So I'm going to start up at the top. Deep breath in and out. And I'm hearing normal lung sounds here. Deep breath in and out. No crackles, no wheezing, clear lung fields. We're going to get down to the base of the lungs. No crackles or wheezing there. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We're going to start back up at the top here. base of the lungs. This lung is also nice and clear for me. And we're going to go on the lateral side. Okay, great. Okay, thank you, Julian. You can go ahead and sit back on the bed facing forward for me. Okay, and I'm just going to tilt this a little bit back up so you guys can see better. Okay, so um, then with the front side, we're also looking at the arms again, too. The arms are nice and symmetrical. The hair growth pattern is normal. His skin color is normal. His ethnicity, nice and warm, not like cold or pain or anything. Go ahead, and I'm just going to feel for a radial pulse here. Plus two is normal. Brachial pulse up here. Plus two, which is also normal. Okay, I'm just going to take this down a little bit. We're going to look at the anterior aspect of the chest for the lungs and for the heart. Um, I'm going to tilt this forward a little bit again. Okay, great. So I'm just looking at his clavicles. They're nice and symmetrical. Um, I'm not noticing any bulges or masses or anything, but I'm going to go ahead and start palpating again. Any masses, any tenderness. Okay, great. And then as I'm doing this, I'm also um, going to start with the tactile firmatus. Go ahead and say 99. And then I'm also going to feel over the pericardium here, which I'm not feeling any thrills or heaves or anything. The point of maximum impulse being the uh, left sternal border, fifth intercostal space, and the clavicular line there, which everything looks fine. Or, I'm sorry, it feels fine there. 
Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also take the um, anterior ones now. So go ahead and just take a deep breath in and out. Nice and clear for the fronts as well. And the lateral aspects, the base, and the bases are also nice and clear. Okay, now that we're done with the lungs and the chest, um, we're moving on to the heart. I already kind of inspected the area and palpated the area. I didn't feel any thrills or heaves or anything like that. Um, so now I'm just going to move into auscultating the heart. So I'm going to come over on this side of the heart. And we're going to start with the aortic area, which is going to be the first, I'm sorry, the second intercostal space on the right sternal border, um, mid clavicular line. And then we're moving on to the pulmonic area, which is the second intercostal space, left sternal border, mid clavicular line. Herb's point, which is the third intercostal space, left sternal border, mid clavicular line. The tricuspid valve, which is the fourth intercostal space. Left sternal border, mid clavicular line. And lastly, the mitral valve, also known as the point of maximum impulse, which is the fifth intercostal space, left sternal border, mid clavicular line. And I'm hearing S1 and S2 are normal. I'm not hearing any. S3 or S4, I'm not hearing any murmurs or any additional heart sounds, which is normal. Okay, so that is it for the heart now. And we'll just move on to the abdomen. So if I could just have you lay flat, we could actually have you lay, swing your legs over this way. Yeah, there you go. You can just lay flat for me. Okay, so first upon um, inspecting the abdomen, I'm just noticing that everything is flat. I'm not seeing any pulsations. I don't notice any hernias, any bulges, anything like that. Um, I'm then going to do um, auscultation just because we don't want to start with palpating first. So then I'm going to auscultate all of the um, four abdominal quadrants here for bowel sounds. And I am hearing bowel sounds in all four quadrants present. They're not hyperactive or hypoactive. They're just within the normal range. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is um, percuss. So over the abdomen, I should hear tympani. And then over organs and bones and things, I should hear dullness. So I'm just going to come here with you and start a percussion. So I hear tympani. And then as I get up to the spleen, I'm hearing some dullness. Tiffany. And then I'm hearing dullness as I get up to the liver. Okay. And then I'm also going to also take some more arteries down here. We're going to do the aortic artery. The left and the right renal arteries. And I'm doing this with a diaphragm of my stethoscope. And then I'll do it again with the bell. So on the renal artery, we're going to do the right iliac artery, left iliac artery, left femoral artery, and the right.
right femoral artery. No bruise or anything hurt there as well. Now I'm going to use the bell of my stethoscope and do the same thing again. When I go ahead and do the aortic, the renal, right renal artery, the left renal artery, the left iliac artery, and the left femoral artery. Once again, no abnormalities were noted there. Okay, so moving on. Now we're going to go ahead and go into the legs. So, Julian, you can just slip back up for me around this way. Okay, so um, you can go ahead and take it down. Okay, and we're going to just take a look at your legs here. So, everything is even. Move this down. Okay, great. So, Hair growth is evenly distributed. I'm just inspecting the legs. No masses, um, no swelling anywhere, no scarring. Skin is normal with ethnicity, nice and warm. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel the um, popliteal pulse. Plus two there. Dorsalis pedis. And the posterior tibia. And these are all plus two findings, which is normal. Plus your tibia. Dorsalis pedis. And the popliteal is back here. Okay, great. Now if you can just scooch a little bit forward, I'm gonna grab a reflex hammer here. Okay, and we're gonna start with the knee. So. When I strike the knee, the foot should come up here. Great. Okay, same thing on the knee. Great, okay. And then I'm going to do the Achilles back here. So when I strike back here, the foot should swing up a bit. Great. And same thing over here. Okay. And then I'm also going to do your brachial reflexes. So if I can just have my arm and just strike my thumb. And for this, your thumb should kind of come in a bit. Great reflexes. Okay. And now what I'm going to have you do, Julian, is go ahead and I'm going to move this out of your way. I just want to see you walk. Go ahead and stand up and just walk straight this way. I'm just um, looking at your gait. Go ahead and walk. And your gait is normal. Not swaying or anything. Great balance. Okay. Now turn away from me. And I'm going to have you try to bend down and touch your toes. I'm just going to check out your spine here. And I'm looking at the spine. There's no scoliosis, no um, curvature to the spine. It's very normal. So now you can stand back up. Okay. Okay. Julian, you can just have a seat. And that concludes our physical examination.